So jumping into the first thing, um, I'm going to talk about what makes up matter. So matter is made up of elements. Um, and then elements are made up of compounds, or rather compounds, uh, elements make up compounds. So what an element is, it's like the substance that cannot be broken down to other substances by chemical reactions. So it's like the most basic like unit of matter. Um, and, and then a combination of elements will make up bigger portions of matter. So for example, here we have listed, uh, we have sodium, which is the elemental symbol is Na. And I have the ions written here just because it kind of matters in this context a bit as we'll get later on into the textbook. Um, sodium is positively charged, chlorine is negatively charged. Uh, and so those are elements, those are, you know, you've probably heard of the periodic table of elements. Uh, they, there's many elements, but they're all different. And, and the reason why we categorize them as elements is because uh, elements on their own have different properties between the various elements. So they'll, they'll act differently. Um, uh, like for example, one element you might drop in water and it won't do anything but then you might drop another element uh, and it'll explode if you drop it in water. And it's because of uh, the fundamentals, like how those elements are individually different between each other. So then compounds, uh, those are, as I mentioned, substances that consist of two or more different elements. So for example, I have listed here uh, table salt. So that would be the, the elements of table salt is sodium and chlorine and then when you add them together and as you can see like the ions Na plus and Cl minus so plus and minus kind of come together and then they form NaCl so therefore it's a compound um, and I think that sodium and chlorine are a bit dangerous on their own like if a human encounters it uh, just there because they want to react with things so if you encounter sodium or chlorine on its own it could react with you and it could hurt uh, but then it's interesting how once you have Na and Cl together, they balance each other out. And it's actually a tasty little condiment to put over or seasoning to put on your food. So now the important part here is, I think, talking about what the elements of life are. Uh, because it's quite interesting how basically like virtually all, actually, I don't want to say virtually all, all uh, organisms on Earth are largely made up of these uh, four elements here. I believe it is 96% of the matter in your body is made up of just oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, or nitrogen. Um, so that's kind of crazy to think about. So I'll just add that there. 96% uh, of the elements above make up living things. Um, now, the, the other thing that I didn't add here for definitions is trace elements. Um, now, while we have the elements of life, it's 96%. Uh, trace elements are more like, th there's very few of it. Uh, so that's the other 4% of what, what's not made up of. So for example, um, and the thing is about trace elements is that they're still required. Um, so small amounts of certain elements uh, that are needed by the organism to function, required, needed by the organism to function. Um, so an example here would be like iron, which is Fe. I think it has various charges, maybe we'll put two plus. Um, but iron is, if you've probably heard about blood, um, blood has an iron-like smell to it sometimes, uh, maybe even tastes a bit irony, and it's because blood literally has iron in it. But that said, it's a very small amount. Um, and that's why it's called a trace element. There's trace amounts present in the organism. And despite it being in every single uh, blood cell, it's still too small because it's only really used in blood cells. Um, and the reason why they have iron in the, in the red blood cell, it's in the 
uh, protein called hemoglobin. Um, the iron picks up, is responsible for picking up oxygen. So it's very vital uh, for the organ's function. If we didn't have iron, your blood cells would not be able to carry oxygen. But that said, iron is only, it's not like a building block. It's just like more of a functional element. So these make up the other 4% of elements in organisms. Okay. Um, another element maybe would be phosphorus, but now let's get into uh, elemental properties. And I mentioned how like some elemental properties will change depending on the element. Like you have, I'm trying to think of like a specific element that explodes um, when you throw it in something, but I, I want to say like something like uh, uh, maybe lithium, like, like atomic lithium. If you put it in water, it could explode. Um, react really violently. Uh, and it's because of the makeup of those atoms. So while atoms are like the smallest unit of matter, so that would be an atom example would be, um, uh, actually, let me grab an image here. So maybe of an atom, actually, I think that would be helpful. Let's see here. There's various different representations of atoms. And the thing with this course, because it's just biology, we're only going to really talk about one. But uh, if you take chemistry or even a bit of physics, uh, like that, you'll find that, um, oh, that's a good image right there. You'll find in, in physics that there's various different types of uh, models to, to show what atoms look like. But in our context, I think this is sufficient. Um, so you can see here we have uh, a model that shows the various protons and neutrons. Um, so on this image, we have uh, in each of these little ones, neutrons, protons, electrons, these are the subatomic particles. So and, and for lack of a better definition, but subatomic particles are essentially just um, the, how do I want to define this? The textbook doesn't actually really define it, but how it kind of says is that it's, uh, let's see, unit of, let's see, particles that make up atoms include and then we'll, we'll write down here, includes neutrons, protons, electrons. So there is, those are the three subatomic particles. Uh, so it's just three, but neutrons are neutral, which makes sense. Uh, protons are charged, they're positively charged. Um, and electrons are negatively charged. So the thing that's neat about uh, and then I guess at the center of, of atoms, there's the atomic nucleus. So that's composed of, uh, of the neutrons and protons. So the neutrons and protons are kind of clumped together in the middle. Uh, and it gives the nucleus a positive charge. Nucleus, because of the the presence of the uh, protons. And then because of that positive charge, then the electrons want to kind of swarm around it. And, and electrons are present uh, are in, in a uh, atomic cloud, so to speak. Electrons surround nucleus in an atomic cloud. So I, I think atoms are pretty cool. It's pretty neat to think about that. Now, the thing that's interesting about atoms is that you can actually like uh, determine what compound or rather what element it is based on the atomic nucleus composition. So in this case, if we were to, let's see, add another text box, this atom here is made up of one, two, three, Four looks like 
it should be six. Oh, it says there, yeah, six protons, six neutrons. Does anybody know what element this would be based on that? 